Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Very, very, very special edition of the Dr. Patcho. It's great to be connected with all of you again. Amazing, amazing to be connecting with all of you again. Um, you know, I, I knew that we had this show planned to speak to Dr. Sharon Martin. And I didn't know that I would be where I was, where I am today, attempting to live this again. And what am I talking about? It's remembering that thanks to Dr. Sharon Martin, reminding all of us that we can maximize our healing power. And there's a few things that we should know to do that. But that is the name of her book, Maximize Your Healing Power, Shamanic Healing Techniques to Overcome Your Health Challenges. And yet, when you think about this, what is so extraordinary about Doc Martin, as I like to uh, <clears throat> I like to call her Doc Martin, we've known each other for a number of years now, and I've been able to walk this walk with her. And when something starts as an idea, and then it starts to take on momentum, and then someone like Dr. Sharon Martin puts one foot in front of the other, right? And you start to you start to look at your life as these pieces of a puzzle that come together. And you're not quite sure what the puzzle is going to turn out to be. But you have a sense that everything you've done in your life has led up to this, right? You have that sense of it. So for more than 20 years, she has been blending these allopathic medicine and ancient shamanic knowledge to help her patients, to help all of us, whether it's through her fabulous show, but to help us understand what the imbalances are and how to apply this to the world of energy medicine techniques. Because it's never been more clear than it is now that energy and energy medicine and energy period is what is getting at the core of either our wellness or our illness. Now, if you're thinking, ah, I don't know what you mean. Stress is an energy. Got that? Frequencies in our bodies, parasites have energies. I mean, we learned that through the journey of life, everything. But here today, I want to introduce you again to my friend and colleague who is very close, just a few, just, I want to say hours away from her book launch for all of you, Maximize Your Healing Power. Doc Martin, it's great to have you here. Pat, thank you so much. It's fun. This is the day before the book launch. So yes. you and I and the team at Transformation Talk Radio have been, we've been building this for at least five, maybe going on six years. Yeah. And what started as my gut feeling started to take form. And then with your help, it just came out that, well, let me back up for a minute. We okay. all know, we sense it, we know it. Modern mainstream medicine is broken. What do I mean by that? Can we do scientific things? Can we do knee replacements? Absolutely. Can we do gamma knife for brain tumors? Absolutely. Can we give a good antibiotic for a scary infection? Absolutely. But somewhere along the way, we, and I'll say that as a doctor, we have lost the hearts and even the minds of the patients. We are not grabbing them where it matters. And what do I mean by that? People are hungry to be fully heard and have every aspect of their being included. And this 
reductionist materialism. What do I mean by that? It's modern science has stuck only in what we can prove to be scientifically, and it misses the boat on our emotional intelligence, our esoteric things. We, we who believe in what many indigenous believe, we have an energy body. We have an energy body and things happen in that that translate into the physical. And when we're eyes, and I'll say that we as doctors, when our eyes are closed to that, we are missing a huge piece of the ability to heal. And I saw this, it was about, actually it was probably 20 years ago. And I had a young man come into my clinic. He wasn't a patient of mine. It was a Friday afternoon, late in the afternoon. We were closing up and this stranger walks in and he's obviously distressed. And I'm thinking I've got a psychiatric case on my hand. I live rurally. The clinic is really rural and it's a good 40 minutes to the nearest hospital. I'm thinking, do I have to call an ambulance and the state police because this guy is psychiatric? Well, as I explored, and I tell this story in detail in my book, in fact, it's the opening chapter. When I felt into it, I realized that this young man was unbelievably psychic, sensitive, intuitive, and he could feel things that were going on. And it was making him nuts because our mainstream world did not validate that. And he thought he was crazy and was scared. And I asked his girlfriend, is that true, that he sees things, he dreams about things, and they come true? She said, absolutely. And when I told him, you are not crazy, because here I am clicking through my mind all the doctor stuff, all the mainstream stuff. <laughs> is an antipsychotic going to change him? No, it's going to dope him up and make him sit around like, you know, is going to a psychiatric facility going to make any difference here? No, it'll just make him shut it down. Should he shut it down? No, he should not. This is important data he's taking in. He's just different from the majority of us is that he's really good at it. So I said to him, you're not crazy. And in that moment, there was a moment of healing. There was a power of recognizing something that existed outside of his physiology and telling him, you are not crazy. You have these intuitive things, these sensing things, these paranormal things, things that mainstream medicine ignores and probably because we're not taught to pay attention to it. And in that moment, I opened my eyes to a different way. And that's what my book is about. The things that I teach in my book are free. You don't have to go pay for a prescription every month. You do have to buy my book. It's about $20, which truthfully, I think is pretty cheap for what you're going to get. But you don't have to take a prescription. You don't have to put pills in a pill box. But you do have to be willing to connect inwardly. And we connect. And Dr. Pat, you know this from your years of, what, almost 20 years of doing your shows. Mm -hmm. There is a spiritual energy in this, in this awareness we have, in our ability to connect to our consciousness the consciousness, the universal field, the Akashic field, whatever you want to call it, and we have not figured it out scientifically yet, that is where medicine should be going. We have to incorporate that yeah. because it's so big and so powerful. Yeah. I, I want to tell you something. I am very used to, and I got spoiled living in the Pacific Northwest, I do believe, mm -hmm. but I'm back in New Jersey. And things are different here, I'm finding mm -hmm. out. And yeah. uh, my my best friend is going in for a chest uh, scan thingy today. And so she had some blood work done. And I said, let's get the blood work. I'd like to have the blood work before the scan. So this is just me. I'm not a doctor. I'm not like an MD. I'm a PhD. So I just, I know a little bit about the mind and things like that. But intuitively, I asked for the blood work. Because you know what I'm used to getting, Sharon? I, I my stuff comes through a portal my doctor doesn't have to screen it first we get to look at it but I'm finding this is different 
I don't really understand. You know, you have a doctor that's not going to see you for two weeks, but yet they have to look at your blood work. So my best friend says to me, very triple Virgo nonchalantly, why do you need the blood work for the chest scan? Now, I don't have a logical answer to that, Doc Martin. But I know for myself in my 10-year healing journey that having that information was informative to me. It helped me know what to ask, what not to ask. But we're so logical when it comes to medicine. And even with our physicians, if you can't give them a logical answer, for the most part, not everyone. So I just want to be very clear. I have the best doctors, by the way. I have the best doctors. I just have to tell you, and Doc Martin has been phenomenal in helping me. But sometimes it's hard to explain the energetic nature of what you see. And yet here you are, you're doing it. What was it like for you, Doc, to take what you learned, your experience? What was it like to take that step to write this book? Because that is a bold move. But how did you feel about that? What was driving you to say, I'm going to put pen to paper? Well, we don't have pen anymore, but but you and I did do some pen work. But what did it take for you to do that? What was what was calling you forward and what was pushing you from behind? So at that moment with that young man in the clinic, I knew that I had achieved healing for him and for myself. It opened my mind. He was a gift. Meeting him was a gift to me, a huge gift. It opened me to see there is a different way. And what I want to achieve is in the realm of healing and well-being. And it may not have the same shape and size and pill form as mainstream medicine. So that drove me to start learning about the esoteric, about the other ways of healing. And the Four Winds Society brought forward the healing techniques of the um, Caro Indians in, in Peru, and they still did energy techniques. They could see an energy body, and they could sense that other dimension that we all have and heal in that arena. And that mm -hmm. opened my perception. And the more I studied, and then I studied with other teachers, and the more I studied, the more I came to realize there is so much there that is available to us, and it's free, and every single person can access it. Yeah. And why, can, why aren't we letting them access it? Why does everything have to be some hidden thing that you have to go, as you said, you can't even get your blood work on the portal. Why yeah, can't I never you, heard of that? <laughs> you, yeah, they must not have offered you the portal. You should be able to get the well, portal. they have but the then, portal, but apparently the doctor doesn't release it until he looks at it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, let's just I'm going to answer your question because mm -hmm. let's define shamanism because you come right out in the book and you do this. And thank you for doing it, because if if I didn't have the word in front of it, let me just read this to everyone. Put your own word in front of this. If you all would just have a moment with me and say blank for whatever you want. Blank is defined as a system of spiritual healing and methods designed to promote the well-being of mind, body, and soul. It defines the person as a technician, in this case, a spiritual healer technician who may perform some rituals, journey, soul retrieval. How about prayer intended to create sacred space wherein healing can take place? Now, when you take the word out, what you have, Sharon, is a practice that has been practiced for thousands and thousands of years mm -hmm. without a word. Before the word, there was the practice. There was the practice of cleansing the feet with oil. There were so many practices. And so... This is a time now where we're bringing back an idea that once was the way we survived on earth. Isn't that the truth? Yes. It and what it is, survived. is it, and it's the way we thrived. And what I feel about it is you don't have to do 
the Peruvian techniques. You don't have to do the Mongolian shamanic techniques. You don't have to do ritual drumming. But what you do have to do is take yourself into a meditative space where you can get out of your human mind jibber jabber and connect to something higher than your human jibber jabber. Call it your higher self, call it your soul, call it your spirit guide, call it the universal field, the divine matrix. When you connect to that information, that vast universal matrix of consciousness, you can gain power and ability to change things. And that's what I believe shamanic healers do. They connect to that information field and download it together in harmony with their client. So this to me is, let me back up and say every single, and I can say this without, without a doubt, without even one exception, every single client I've done, quote, energy work on in a 45 minute to an hour session has felt better. And that feeling better and shift lasts a long time. Can I find any prescription where one pill will do that? One pill, okay, you're really anxious, you could take a Xanax and you could be chill for a day, probably not two, and sometimes not even a whole day. Here is something that works, that's effective, that's long lasting, and then the person starts to make shifts in their lives. There isn't more power than that. And that's what mainstream medicine has to start connecting with and including. There's something in the book I want to read. Um, for those of you just tuning in, Dr. Sharon Martin here is literally, we are less than... <laughs> TikTok, TikTok. Almost, almost 12 hours away from her book launch, Maximize Your Healing Power, Shamanic Healing Techniques to Overcome Your Health Challenges. But there's so much more here. I want to read something from the book because I reread your book and this jumped at me this morning. Okay. You said the key approach to healing uses energy medicine involves positive thoughts and intentions. Focused aim, you call it. I mm -hmm. love that. Thoughts have power. When I see a spot on a lung x-ray, I call on the field around me, which connects my patient and me to entrain itself to my belief that what I'm looking at is as harmless as can be. Of course, if a lung biopsy were to prove it's something malignant, I'll discuss treatments. But initially, I choose to maintain the most powerful, positive thought I can. Whenever you create a thought, you affect the energy field we share. I want to be sure I'm affecting it in the best way. And then you go on, and we'll talk about this again. You go on to talk about harsh words. So coming out of the book, you're telling us not just about our thoughts, but also our behavior, our harsh words, and what we say to people. And it, it's so important. I was joking on my plane ride from Chicago to New Jersey. And we got on the plane. Of course, it was late. Um we knew it was late, it came in late, but we're all sitting, we're getting ready to take off and the pilot comes on and blah, 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 great, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and I just wanna tell you that the reason we're late is because the wheels were out of alignment and we ha and I'm like, did I need to, either the FAA told him he had to do that or that's way too much information. The wheels were out of alignment, but now they're back in alignment. Do I really want that? taking off and it was interesting because we're no different with medicine we're no different with training and we're no different with the history of this but you're bringing something contemporary and that's what I want to talk to you about it's not just about telling somebody hey by the way you're you're out of alignment it's about understanding the full complex nature of energy the physical body spirituality and being trained enough to know what to do with that, plus your knowledge. You have been, you have more degrees, more, you have been trained as a medical doctor. <laughs> I've right? been in, I've been a student too long. Mm -hmm. You've been a student. 
But bringing this all together gives it exponential energy. Doesn't it, Sharon? It does. And what I'll just share another example. And um, Stefan Schwartz, whom I interviewed on my show, Maximum Medicine, it talks about the way we make change in the world is every day on a day-to-day -day individual basis, every action, we choose the action that promotes well-being. So I had a short reel of a photo when I was uh, marketing, you know, building up to the book launch. And I was a cold morning. It was probably 7.30 in the morning. I can't, she's got to share this story. Let's take a short break. Right. You've got to hear the rest of the story, everybody. Let's take a short break. When we come back, uh, we'll be talking with Sharon. If she can tell you this story, it, it is, it saddens me to understand that we're in the world where we don't know how to be kind to each other. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, Dr. Sharon Martin is here on the launch. The debut tomorrow is her book, Maximum, Maximize Your Healing Power. It hits the shelves. It hits Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. It's going to be everywhere. I would encourage all of you to go to her website, Dr. Sharon Martin, drsharonmartin.com. Uh, and right there, what you're going to see is you're going to see the book. You can purchase it from there, or you can go anywhere, maximize your healing power, Dr. Sharon Martin. There it is tomorrow, ready to go. I know a number of you have already bought the book. No problem. Keep buying the book, spread the word, um, and much more information. Also, Dr. Doc Martin does a fabulous show. Um, it's all part of what she has created. What she's created is called something called maximum medicine. Maximum medicine. Just think about that. With no, no criteria around the word medicine. It could be energy. It could be healing. It could be prayer. It could be spiritual right? We hear people talk about spiritual medicine. Um, Doc Martin, did I leave anything out? No, I think that's good. And you're right. Um, that sweet spot where you consider everything, you have really linked up with all of the forces that bring you inner power. And then that's your best. That's your best. That's the way to really maximize your medicine. Well, I was thinking about, and I'm sorry, my video freaked out. You know, it's beautiful to live out in the rural because nature <laughs> is beautiful and it's peaceful, but you don't have good broadband. So I apologize to everybody. But I was thinking about Stefan Schwartz, who is a researcher and writer and remote viewer. And he said to really be effective change artist, you, every decision in your life, you should choose that which brings about well-being. Well, I have so many patients, and Pat, you know, probably know this from times you've struggled with health things. If you yourself as a person needing a health change or my patients, if you get scared and you lack confidence, and you don't have, you have fear, you're re really not thinking well-being for yourself. Yeah, You're not thinking about that state in which you've recovered, you've improved, you've healed. And I talk about that in my book and the mindfulness matrix. There are key energies that you want to think and absorb in your thoughts, which then direct your actions. And that includes the ability to feel expansive. As soon as you have resistance, as soon as you go into fear or doubt, you are contracted, you are not expanded. And you need to expand to step on to a destiny line that has a new future. Um, and so I teach that all in my book. And, you know, how you think makes a difference, the actions you take, and just suspending disbelief and even if it means surrendering it to something higher than yourself, and when you surrender it and you let the higher powers face it, there's energies in this universe that are hugely more powerful than puny humans. And when you get step into alignment with those, bam, 
stuff can happen. Yeah. And, and the reason it's so important to really explore resistance, because, you know, I know what it's like for myself and I know what I went through before I surrendered. And it was the hardest thing for me to accept help. And I, I got that. And this was before I met you, Sharon. Um, and I got that from Dr. Darvish and Dr. Ronnie. Once I was able to accept things that I didn't understand, everything changed for me. It, it mm -hmm. went from being afraid, resistance, you know, telling myself, no, you know, no, I don't want to leave me alone. I mean, all of those things we tell ourselves when we're not well. Once I was able to surrender that, I could heal and I could feel the healing. But I will tell you, I sat, sat in those chairs more times than not. And, you know, with amazing uh, treatments, right, from Dr. Darvish. And you could just feel the tension. But you said surrender. And I want to talk about this because you and I are both of this world. We're out there. We talk about these things. I've I've talked about healing now for a really long time, 15 years. I talked about my treatments. Um, and yet, are we ready? Is the world ready to accept one, who you and I are for who we are? And are we opening up to learn a different way? We have, well, I hope we are. I think we are. There's a lot of people holding these energies, these currents of thought. Um, we are critically in need of change, of how we view society, of our willingness to um, like wealth inequality and opportunities, and even in healing, start to take on more as opposed to less. And there's so much... Um, it happens on all sides in medicine and politics and everything. There's so much put down of them. It's them versus us. And that's got to stop. Um, we've got to be inclusive. And when we are able to be inclusive, it's like you go to a smorgasbord and there's you have so many things to choose from. And maybe today in your healing journey, a essential oil is what you need. But maybe tomorrow... You need to be in a chair and get an infusion. Um, don't close yourself to any possibility. Um, and and don't, don't be fooled into thinking every one thing has the perfect answer. I think it's going to be a blend. Yeah. I want to ask you about something very specific in the book and very specific that you talk about that we don't talk about. Um, you talk about the second point in the medicine wheel, and we should talk about the medicine wheel. It's one of the things you present in the book. However, I must say you present something very different. When I refer to a medicine wheel, I'm talking to the med maximum medicine medicine wheel. Um, and I want to talk about that a little bit with you. But there's, there's something that you bring to the forefront and you don't leave out, and you call it the emotional perspective. You know, how does the individual feel about their ailment or illness? That is a great question. I, I wondered that because I didn't ask my best friend because I think my best friend has the best attitude about this and not thinking that she has an illness. So, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing to get in touch with your feelings. Now, I got to tell you, Sharon, I knew how I felt. I mean, I, I mean, at first... I didn't think about it, but as time went on, years went on, you get frustrated. You get to the point where you may or may not get better. You've gotten so many people telling you what to do, what to take. And then somehow you get some clarity, but talk about the emotional perspective because that does not get talked about that often. Well, first that's a wheel that I did not um, invent that was taught to me by Alberto Violdo. Um, but when we shift our perspective, when we see things in the literal world, for example, the literal world is your Lyme test came back positive. The emotional world is you've then taken yourself perhaps down the rabbit hole of I'm never going to be well. 
the emotional world sees things differently. And when you see something differently, it puts a whole new framework on it. And we can show ourselves that other and recognize, for example, if you're in fear, then you're probably contracted because you're going to be resistant to something. So if you can see the emotional perspective, start to pick it apart. What are my emotions? Why? And then am I having a fear? Is there really any data to support that? Or am I just down the rabbit hole? And then you start to see, okay, that might not be real. It's just my feelings. And that's an important exercise to take it through. And the other perspectives are to look at it from a spiritual journey and then take it to the energetic. Um, so those are important perspectives to give you new views. Yeah. But then what you do is you bring it to the medicine wheel of interactions, the four A's. And this is the, this is what is so cool. I want you to talk about this for, if you could, because, okay, great. Now I have the awareness <laughs> that I may may have some form of Lyme disease or may have all the forms of Lyme disease, <laughs> every go infection on the planet. But it, when you bring us forward and talk about the four A's in the world, you call it the wheel of interactions. Tell us about the four A's because this is pivotal to the approach that you use, isn't it? So when I was thinking about what would I tell my patients on how to shift a health challenge, I kept coming back. First of all, the medicine wheel moving from the south to the west, the north to the east, the four directions, the four corners of the earth. Seeing that spiral journey, I realized that any process that I would teach them, both in awareness for them and in um, actions, came down to four key steps. So the awareness, yes, you have an awareness, and you want to expand that. So you do intuitive practices, meditative journeys to get more data. But the next step is for me, and I for me, this is the, the step with the most juice. This is the step where um, you really can expand and see resources. It's the step of allow. And to me, the allow is when you start to ask all of those higher energies things outside yourself, nature and its energies, universal angels, ascended masters, your higher self, power animals. You call in and align yourself with energies that exist in the universe that bring you more than what you had to start. And that adds and gives you power and it gives you insight and it gives you, for me, the best feeling when I worked with these energies is I realized I'm not alone. That realization is phenomenal. And then from the allow, you go to take an action. And those actions are usually directed by the, the meditative journeys you take. Your there, I teach how you can do a little self-hypnosis. And those actions then say, okay, you're going to change your diet. You're maybe going to do an energy clearing. You're going to do a ceremony. You're going to, and I teach a few of these in my book. Um, and then you have to, the fourth step is affirm it because you can't just do it once. You have to practice it and bring it into your daily life over and over to make an effective change. So I call that affirm. So th that's the wheel of the four A's, aware, allow, act, and affirm. And I think that's a key. I see that as a key steps to any of these processes. Uh, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, what does it mean to bring it all together? How do you combine the physiology with the spiritual? How do you combine physiology with the Chicana? How do you do that? And when we come back, you're going to hear how Dr. Martin did it. I wanted to say to everybody, this is a short interview compared to what you'll find in the book. 
there are exercises the, in the book. Doc Martin brings you on this journey, explains everything, um, as well as points to some things that you can do now, things that you can do to change. When we come back, what does it look like? What could it look like? What has Doc Martin done to combine physiology with the Chicana? If you don't know what the Chicana is, stay tuned. That's coming your way too. Let's take a short break, Benny. Jessica, we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. You're listening to The Dr. Pat Show. For more information about me, go to thedrpatshow.com or you can go to the transformationnetwork.com uh, or transformationtalkradio.com for Dr. Sharon Martin. That is super easy to do. We want to make sure everybody there knows how to do that. It's Dr. Sharon Martin and it's drsharonmartin.com. Uh, we are excited, <laughs> very excited. The book is here. Oh my gosh, I can't even believe it. Max, I know I, all those years of working on it. Oh, finally. My, oh, like it's tomorrow is the day. Wow. The big day. It is a big day. Um, and a lot of work went into this. And that's why yeah. I, I wanted to sort of bring this full circle. Because one of the things for sure that I want people to know is that what you put together does integrate physiology and the Chicana. And I wanted you to talk about that. Of course, the book has exhibits. They're going to be able to see things. But this was very important to do. Can you talk to that and, and explain a little bit more about what that is to folks? So I realized that when I'm assessing a patient now with my training in the esoteric and shamanic medicine, that I started to see, I'll call them energies or components or characteristics, and we talk about them in the wheels, in the medicine wheels, seeing the elements, earth, air, fire, and water, seeing the perceptual states, literal emotional, spiritual, energetic, and being transfixed by the symbol of the Chicana, which in South America is a symbol, stair-step symbol, like a cross um, that represents the Southern Cross connected to constellations, and seeing people's journey as a spiral stair-step journey. They make improvements and then they're on a plateau and then they go up and make an improvement. They're on a plateau and they circle around coming back to home, but the home is different. The home has changed and improved. And I realized that at any time, at any time in, that I could take a snapshot evaluation of somebody, I could see their physiology as these different, I saw the medicine wheels as circling around, concentric circles circling around the person, kind of like you spin a combination lock and one, one wheel will land at a space and then the other will spin and land at a space until clunk, 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 clunk. You've got the combo for that day for that person. And I realized that I saw heart issues and I considered them as cardiology, physiology, heart issues as being very important to be grounded and have earth component, um, blood, iron. I mean, none of this is brilliant. A lot of this is quite simplistic, but and it changes based on who's observing and what the person is in front of you. But then I would see, and that fit, fit on a on the part of the circles. And then I would see um, when I saw rheumatologic conditions, to me, the concreteness of arthritis was very much too much of an earth element and not enough water and fluidity, not enough flexibility and fluidity. Or you could see a problem with lungs, of course, lungs are air, but lungs also fill up with fluid from congestive heart failure. So you could have too much water. Um, even though your air might be good, you might be overwhelming with water. So 
again, all of those are snapshots in time, but you can feel this complex spinning around of these wheels around in my mind as I'm looking at somebody and you have so much more to so many more nuances to add to your assessment and it brought a richness and a depth when I thought about all of these um, pieces that come together in a confluence of how the person is and and that's what I describe when I brought the Chicana and the physiology in, because we are so much more than just that quick view. And again, the quick view that mainstream medicine does, of course, it gives you nuance with blood work. It gives you nuance with CAT scans. But it, the esoteric, energetic, spiritual, emotional nuances are there also. And it kind of opened my eyes to how we've got to see a bigger complex. And I saw those as wheels spinning around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm sitting here today because of everything you just said. Now, how I got that knowledge and wisdom, I had a radio show that put me in touch with people that did some of the things you talked about. I had a naturopath that was so far ahead of the world and seeing it, but I had to do the work myself to be open to it. I mean, I didn't I didn't show up here doing this show 20 years ago, understanding that energy medicine was a thing. I mean, this is something that we take a journey on, but your book, Doc Martin, your book lays out a beautiful blueprint that really does bridge the gap between the scientific and the spiritual. I want to ask you this. You've now taken the journey. The book is going to come out tomorrow. You've gotten great reviews from people, endorsements uh, about the book. What's next? What's on the horizon as you think about tomorrow? Certainly, you've got a lot of interviews you're doing but you've certainly grown from the journey of writing the book and you certainly probably have grown from the idea of being out in the public talking about it for you right right well where i come where i come from i think my um my personality my soul signature so to speak i'm a teacher and i like or I should say, I don't like things that are so esoteric and secret. It's like only certain people have the key to be able to understand a certain process or language. Um, I don't like that. I like everybody should have access to everything. And I see myself as a teacher and a translator. Um, if I can help you figure out something that I've learned myself and I can explain it in a way that wakes you up and opens your eyes. That's where I'm headed is to do more of that. And how has this been for you being out there talking about the book? You know, what has that been like? Because it's one thing to spend as much time as you did in writing it and thinking about it. And now you're out in the world you know, there's almost a new energy when I hear you speak about this. How has it changed you? Well, I got nervous when my PR person, Gail Tor, booked me on over 30 podcasts <laughs> nationally. And I thought, how am I going to say the same thing over and over? And I've done several so far and lots more to come in the next few weeks. I've realized that different parts of the book, different things um, interest the person interviewing me, and every conversation is different. And so I've been energized by that. I've been excited by that. I've recognized where people are hungry. Um, some people are hungry for understanding a ritual. You know, how do I do a fire ceremony? How can I do a clearing? Some people are um energized by how do i change my thinking so i can bring in better 
uh, results in my life. So that's been exciting. And that I like that. When I think about this and I think about what develops, because it's never really a beginning or an end, right? People think it's a beginning and an end, right, Doc Martin? They're like beginning and the end. But this is like a journey and a process. What excites you when you think about the future? And I know it's a little bit like tomorrow's the day, but clearly you've gotten some ideas about stepping out into the world, about teaching. Tell us some of the upcoming events that you'll be doing. Well, I submitted a, well, I'm going to the Edgar Casey ARE Foundation in July, and I'm going to do uh, short shamanic readings um, there. It's July 22nd, I believe. I've submitted a proposal to um, do a weekend retreat next summer at Lilydale, which is the home of spiritual mediums. I've submitted a program to teach at Omega. So bringing this to people to help them implement this in their lives will be very exciting. And then you and I, Pat, we're going to come up with more um, things, including online courses. Yeah. Yeah. This is for me, being able to see this. And Jessica, too, is here. Um, being able to watch this and see how much work you put into this and how, how much creative genius has gone in to allowing people to see the many and multifaceted ways they can look at their healing journeys differently. And I think that's what you're giving them. You're giving them that choice to be able to look at some things that are so ancient in, in our civilizations, the things that have kept us alive. Doc Martin, thank you for today. Last question, what's your personal message? What would you like to leave us with today? Well, I keep landing back on the, the concept of maximum medicine. I realize that we have the ability to be maximum humans. We really, and we need to be, the world needs to change. And we have the capacity to expand, to have more inner power, to have transformation and that's what I'm all about. And to help people get there, I love that. Thank you. Dr. Sharon Martin, everybody, I'm Dr. Pat. Please go to Sharon's website, which is drsharonmartin.com, drsharonmartin.com. Doc Martin, I can't wait until tomorrow. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for having me on your show. I'm so excited. And thank you for your guidance over the last six years. Uh, it's just warming up. Jessica, thank you. Benny, thank you. And to all of you, the best audience on the planet, thank you so much. Please, uh, book is available, pre-order or get it tomorrow. We'd love to have you join in on the Maximum Medicine Conversation. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.